Well, it's good to be with you this morning. Uh, my message to you this morning is the umbrella blessing. And uh, I've read through uh, Deuteronomy uh, uh, 28, uh, uh, 1 through uh, one through three, and uh, and even a little bit beyond, and then uh, uh, Romans chapter three, uh, verses twenty one through uh, twenty six, I believe. Jonas Henway, uh, probably haven't heard of him lately or ever. <laughs> he made his uh, his future and his fortune as a sea captain and as a merchant. Uh, later in life, he turned his attention to, uh, uh, toward the philanthropy. Uh, so one of the two things that Mr. Henway was uh, famous for was his giving. And he called it the umbrella blessing. Henway's uh, resting place uh, is in North just north of Westminster Abbey. Uh, some of history's most famous poets and politicians and scientists are, are also there. It's kind of like the who's who. Uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth I is buried there, Sir Isaac Newton, Charles Dickens, and even Charles Darwin. Uh, a statue honoring Jonas Henway depicts a man distributing clothing to children with an inscription that reads, and let me just read that inscription. The helpless infant nurtured through his care, the friendless prostitute sheltered in reform, the hopeless youth rescued from misery and ruin and trained to serve and to defend his country, uniting in one common strand of gratitude, bear testimony to their benefactor's virtues. This was the friend and father of the poor. Deuteronomy 28 verses one through three, and I'm reading from the, uh, from the New King James Version, and it says, now and it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to observe carefully all of his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. This morning, uh, I brought an umbrella. Uh, and uh, I like to think of the blessings of God as an umbrella. In fact, as a New Testament believer living under a new covenant, the follower of Jesus Christ, we live under a spiritual umbrella. First John chapter two, verses, uh, uh, verses two, uh, again in the King James Version, uh, he, uh, and he himself is a propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for those of the whole world. And then in Romans chapter three, verse 24 through 25, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate the righteousness, because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. So here the blood of Jesus shed on the cross is emphasized as what appeased God or served as our propitiation, our covering. Most commentaries agree that our, our propitiation serves as our spiritual umbrella. It's our covering. The point of it all is simply this. The blood of Jesus is enough. You know, this umbrella 
doesn't change the forecast. Life will rain on the just and the unjust. The second thing I, I, I find interesting about Jonas Henley, he did what no Englishman had ever done before. Henley was the first Englishman, a Londoner, to carry an umbrella. Back in history, they called it a, a portable roof, and then, uh, then it was later called a parasol. Uh, and it was considered an accessory uh, suitable only for women. Uh, we got one over on you now. Back in history, some 250 years ago, real men got wet. The blessings of the umbrella are kind of like a covering of sorts, a, a, an extra layer of protection against the, the, the elements. Psalm 91, verse 1, again in the King James Version, New King James, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So again, you, you are abiding under the umbrella of blessings. For one minute, I, I want you just to, to picture uh, Jonas Hanway uh, walking the streets of London, singing in the rain under his umbrella. Uh, and if you can't do that, think about uh, maybe Gene Kelly uh, singing and dancing in the rain. I love that. <laughs> Remember this, the blessing of God doesn't mean that you won't get wet. But it can keep you singing in the rain. On the summit of Mount Sinai, God met Moses and inscribed the Ten Commandments on, on stone tablets. Those commandments uh, create the condition in which the blessing of God is uh, predicated. You know, the blessing of God is not carte blanche. Uh, all of God's blessings come with a condition that must be met. In this instance, it, it's plain and it's simple. In Deuteronomy uh, 28, verses 1 through 6, I'm reading from the message. If you listen obediently to the voice of God, your God, and hardly obey all his commandments that I command you today, God, your God, will place you on high, high above all the nations of the world. All these blessings will come down on you and spread out uh, uh, beyond you because you have responded to the voice of God, your God. God's blessing inside the city, God's blessing in the country, God's blessing on your children, the crops of your land, the young of your livestock, the calves of your herd, the lambs of your flocks, God's blessing on your basket and bread bowl, God's blessing in your coming in, and God's blessing on your going out. So if we want to position ourselves for God's blessings, Guess what? Just be obedient. Just obey. S sounds simple, doesn't it? <laughs> On occasion, uh, a pastor that, that I knew some time ago, uh, he said uh, uh, that we need to get under those things God has put us over, God has put over us, so that we can get over those things that God has put under us. You have to think about that for a while, but it's, it's a good saying. Again, in Deuteronomy uh, 28, verses 7 through 12, and uh, again, I'm uh, reading from the message. God will defeat your enemies who attack you. They'll come at you uh, on one road and run away on seven roads. God will order a blessing on your barns and workplaces. He'll bless you in the land that God, your God, has given you. 
God will form you as a people holy to him, just as he promised you. If you keep the commandments of God, your God, and live the way he has shown you, all the peoples on earth will see you living under the name of God and hold you in respectful awe. God will lavish you with good things, children from your womb, offspring from your animals, crops from your land, the land that God had promised your ancestor that he would give you. God will throw open the doors of his sky vaults and pour rain on your land and on schedule and bless the work that you take in hand. Now, you would probably agree with me that we don't always obey. However, remember your new covenant. That's where our spiritual umbrella, uh, which represents the new covenant, comes in hand. In Galatians chapter 3, uh, verses 13 and 14, uh, God has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed, everyone, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So how do we live under this spiritual umbrella? I can tell you, just plain and simple, we live redeemed. Jesus took our curse. And again, we are to receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, if we choose to be disobedient, uh, we come out from under our spiritual umbrella. You know, his word hasn't changed, never will change, and neither should you. Stay under his custody, his protection. God is love, and he's in love with you. God will always provide a hedge for you. Deuteronomy 28, verse 2, in the uh, English Standard Version, it says, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, if you will be the voice of the Lord your God. Big if in there. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of extended warranties. You know, I, I get a lot of this stuff in the mail, you know, especially on cars that I had about 10, 12 years ago. You know. <clears throat> but however, there is some good, good news. There's no expiration date on the promises of God. And those promises are backed by a God who does not ever default. But notice that the condition is repeated for good measure. If you will obey the voice of the Lord your God. The Latin word for obey just means to, to give ear. Uh, obedience starts with, with an ear that is concentrated uh, uh, to Jesus Christ. Again, in the English Standard Version, in Psalm 19, verse, uh, verse 14, it says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. It's kind of like tuning into God's frequency and, and turning up the volume. It's, it's obeying his, his whispers, even if culture is screaming the exact opposite, which is just what they're doing today. If you <clears throat> read sometime later on in Deuteronomy, again in chapter 28, if you read through 15 through, through 68, uh, it gives great attention to the, to the curse uh, that will be upon the people who practice disobedience. Again, in, in uh, Galatians, uh, chapter 3, verse 13, in the message, God redeemed us from that self-defeating, cursed life by absorbing it completely into himself. You remember that scripture that says, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. 
So I submit to your, <clears throat> your spiritual understanding that if you are in Christ Jesus, the blessings of God belong to you. The writer of Lamentations uh, said that God's mercies are new every morning. Listen, listen to this in Lamentations 3, uh, uh, 21 and, and through 23 in the New King James Version. He says, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Though the Lord's mercies are not consumed by the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. You know, the Hebrew word uh, for new doesn't mean again and again and again. It means different, different. God's mercies are different every morning. This is its actual meaning. God's mercy is different from today's mercy, which is different from the mercy of the day before that. Now, if you want to do some math this morning, most people don't want to do math, but... Uh, <clears throat> Multiply your age by 365 days. Then add the number of days since your last birthday up to now. Well, mine's, uh, I did this math, and mine is uh, 28,470. And plus the, the, the day since my last birthday is 305. So the grand total here is 28,775 uh, uh, 28, days. I look pretty good for that, don't I? <laughs> My point is simply this. Each day's mercy is a never-to-be-repeated miracle. There never has been there never will be anyone like you. But this isn't a testament to you. It's a testament to the God who created you. And the significance of that is that no one can worship like you or for you. When we sing a song like uh, Great is Thy Faithfulness, uh, we may be singing the same words, but we're, we're singing a very different song because of who we are. If a blessing had a first name, I'd call it favor. And if a blessing had a last name, I'd call it anointing. So just remember this, the blessings and favor of God have become your spiritual umbrella. The favor of God is, is the X favor and, and God's anointing is the difference between the best you can do and the best God can do. It's gifting beyond natural ability because it's him in you. I know that I could probably speak for you, but you can speak for yourself. God has been faithful to me in thousands, thousands of different ways. How about you? Can we get a witness with that? Amen. We need to decide today to live under the umbrella of blessing, God's blessing. There's no greater place to be than under his umbrella. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Uh, may it be a, a, truly a, a blessing to us, Lord, that uh, we might uh, understand, Lord, uh, uh, even in a, a different fashion, Lord, uh, your amazing grace, your wonderful mercy, and, and your love, which... Uh, it, last forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen.